Hi everybody, this is Jerry Dean from Missing Persons of America. We're going to go over the case of a 10-year-old boy who's now 11 that went missing from Iowa. Xavier Harrelson, he was 10 years old when he went missing. He's 11 now and he went missing from Montezuma, Iowa on May 27, 2021. Now he's last seen leaving the home that he shared with his mother at the Spruce Village Trailer Park in Montezuma. He was on his bike and he was seen leaving and no one has seen him since. Now Xavier's mom's friend, Samantha, reported Xavier missing. And the media went over there to talk to the neighbors at the trailer park. And many of them stated that Xavier acted as the caretaker for, for his mother, who was an amputee. And they also went on to say that there was a lot of arguing that what could be heard coming from their home. And I suppose it must have been a lot of arguing for them to feel the need to bring it up to the media. Uh, one of the statements was they could hear a lot of yelling going on at the trailer between Xavier and his mom, Sandra. Now Kevin Papser, who was a neighbor, he lived next door, said the two would argue off loud enough that they could hear the screaming, but not actually make out what they were saying. And here's a little thing that he had to say to the news. Xavier's neighbor, Kevin Kouser, is one of many who wants an update. If there has been any leads or if it's gone cold, I guess. He says the uncertainty of what happened is affecting people who live in Spruce Village Trailer Park. A lot of people, from what I've seen, are scared. Um, you don't even see kids going around it trailer park like you used to. Dalton Dupy shares the sentiment about the unknown surrounding Xavier's disappearance. Uh, I live right here in this trailer next right here and uh, his trailer is not far down from mine and it's kind of scary because I got nieces and nephews that live here with me and um, I really appreciate it if you guys would bring him home. Now also Xavier sometimes would leave home and he would go stay with neighbors and this is not what's going on here. He's not with anyone. Nobody he usually would stay with uh, have seen him. None of the neighbors have seen him. His mother hasn't seen him. And no one knows what has happened to him. Samantha Ricks is his best friend's mom. She reported him missing and has helped with search and awareness efforts ever since. You know, it's hard to put these feelings into words. Um, just the questions, you know, and the whys, the where's, the how's, um, what can we do? So police and the family have said that Xavier would go to friend's house and be gone for hours, but he's never been gone for the whole night. So this was what makes this so unusual. He's never been gone the whole night before. So after I was done recording Xavier Harrelson case, I was looking at other cases and I ran across the Molly Tibbetts case. Now, if you recall back, she went missing back in July of 2018 and was later found deceased. Well, there were, is a trial that was going on for a man, Christian Bahina Rivera, that he was convicted in the case of Molly Tibbetts. And I was reading up on it, and I, they were having some issues with this trial because the defense requested a new trial and asked the judge to compel prosecutors to provide more information on other suspects that were investigated in the case. So they've gone through this whole trial, and all of a sudden this new information pops up that, that's putting this whole trial to a stall. I mean, they can't even go forward until they figure out what the next step they're going to do. So let me tell you first with the Molly Tibbetts, what's going on there, and then I'll explain to you why it's tied in to Xavier's case. 
So evidently there was a couple witnesses that stated that Gavin Jones confessed to them that he was there with Molly Tibbetts. And Rivera told police that there, in the beginning there was two masked men that actually was involved with the Tibbetts case and they forced him to drive around with her in the uh, trunk of the car. Now, there's two more witnesses that are coming forward that saying that what he is saying is actually true. Now, no one believed uh, Rivera. They go, no, this is not true. This is not what happened. He was, um, there was no mass men involved. And now these people are coming forward and say, oh, yeah, I was a witness. And another one says, well, I overheard this in jail and I overheard that. And now there's names coming forward. The defense attorneys filed documents that allege that prosecutors failed to disclose that cops were investigating a trap house. And according to these documents that are now sealed, and it's filed by the defense, Arnie Mackey, a witness for the defense, said that Gavin Jones, I mentioned him before, allegedly told him he had seen Tibbetts being held captive at that trap house. Well, the trap house is owned by a 50-year-old man who's currently in jail on, I believe, an outstanding warrant for some burglary that he had done earlier. And Mackey's saying that Jones helped the 50-year-old man do away with Tibbetts because her case got too big and was drawing too much attention and, and they didn't want anybody locating or figuring out where she was at. Now, that was what Jennifer Free says Thursday during that trial, the Tibbetts trial. Then the defense, they brought out the name of the 50-year-old, and the 50-year-old's name was James Manuel Lowe. Lowe was reported to be operating a ring out of New Sharon during the time that Molly went missing. But the thing about Lowe, this is the kicker. Defense attorneys Chad and Jennifer Free say they had learned that Lowe had dated Xavier's mother. And in fact, they once lived together. They've got a 2019 eviction notice filed electronically that has Lowe's and Xavier's mother's name on it. So I wanted to know if this was true or not because. The same defense team also said that there was 10 kids missing from, I don't believe it was Montezuma, but I believe it was the county, uh, the Powershite County, P-O-W-E-S-H-I-E-K County uh, in Iowa. And they said there was 10 kids missing. And I went back and I looked at it and I can't find 10, ki 10 kids missing. I see Xavier missing. And I think it was one other from um, a couple years back, but there's nobody, uh, but 10 kids missing. So I don't know where they got this information. Now, a lot of times you'll have kids, and you know, I hate that word runaway, but you'll have 10, you know, kids, teenagers that nobody can locate. And within a few days to a, a few weeks, they'll pop back up and they'll be wiped from the missing list and because they'll be brought home. So I don't know if they just happened to look and found a bunch of teenagers that were missing and that's what they were relating to, the 10, because I can't find it. I'm not saying that they made it up. I'm just saying I can't find that these 10 kids are still missing, just the one or two. So that's why I'm questioning with this other information that they're saying that low and Sarah once lived together. So I thought, okay, well, if they're kind of mistaken on the kids, maybe they're mistaken on this also. So that let me go back to Sarah and let me ask her because I was I had been talking to Sarah before about our missing son's case. So I said, well, let me go back and talk to her and ask her the question. So I did. I asked her if uh, this is what I found out uh, from the media and uh, can you give me any more information about it? And, and at this time, which is Monday, July 19th, she has not responded to me. So I don't have anything from Sarah that absolutely says, yes, that's true. He did once live with us. I was also curious if he was around when Xavier went missing or 
if it's he'd long been out of Sarah and Xavier's life. So I was interested about that. Now, the police do have him now, and he is in jail on other charges. The Jane Manuel Lowe, there's a picture of him now. So I don't know what is going on with this, if it has nothing to do with the case, if or if it's going to turn out to be some piece of information that's going to help us understand what happened to Xavier, or maybe some kind of tip that will lead to the finding of Xavier. And that's the most important thing here is finding Xavier Harrelson. Alrighty, I just wanted to give you that new information. And if I can find anything else, I will put it up on Missing Persons of America. And you guys can stop in on the, see the article and see if anything new has come up. So at this point, Xavier has been gone over a month and there has been a lot of searches for him. There's been a lot of concerned neighbors that have been searching for him, but they still haven't located him. So I wanted to bring this up to everybody because a lot of times kids are found a couple days, a week later, but in Xavier's case, He's still missing, and I want to get that out there to everybody. He's still out there. So if you happen to live in nearby there, maybe go to a Walmart or another store, grocery store, and you see a boy that you might think looks like Xavier, please take a photo or contact the police and let them know you saw somebody that looked like him. Right now, they need tips badly. They don't have anything to go on. They don't any, even know where to go next to search for him. Now, police use canines to check the whole neighborhood and the park and the radius of the park, but they didn't find anything. There was lots of volunteers that searched for him for days on end and nothing. So right now they don't have any leads. So if you're out and about, if you live in that neighborhood, if you go to the local grocery store, to Walmart, Keep your eyes open. If you recognize or see a boy that looks similar to Xavier, make sure you call it into the police. They're, they're needing tips and things like that to help lead them towards where Xavier might be at this time. And if you have any information, you can call the county sheriff's office at 641-623-5673. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.